What's up guys, V here, and in today's video, I want to show you how to install the NZXT Kraken Elite into your PC. Now, I'm going to be installing this on an AMD motherboard, but I will talk a little bit about the Intel kit since the installation between AMD and Intel is very, very similar. Now, since every single CPU cooler is a little bit different, I'm not going to get into too much detail about the removal process of your CPU cooler since I don't know exactly which cooler you guys have. Now, the only thing I can recommend is warm up your CPU a little bit before the removal process. You can run the PC 30 seconds or so to soften that old thermal paste so it'll pop right out sometimes you got to give it a little wiggle while you're pulling it out and if it still doesn't go make sure the screws are fully loosened up now since I'm removing an old cooler I have thermal paste to clean off and we do have to clean that off and the way I'm gonna do this is 91% alcohol and some paper towels now before I wet the paper towel I like to uh, give it a dry wipe first then take a bit of alcohol. You don't need a whole lot. You can spend a lot of time with like Q-tips and clean all that off if you want to, but the main surface area that you need to worry about is the front face of it. Now, one more tip for AMD users. If you're building your PC brand new, you're gonna have these little brackets attached up top right here, and then you're gonna have one at the bottom over here and each of these brackets has two screws you're going to want to remove all four screws take these out grab a ziploc bag and toss everything in along with the screws and then keep them in case you ever need them for a future cpu cooler all right first thing we're going to do is we're going to install the fans onto the radiator now just keep in mind which side you need the cable for your case you might need it this way this way or if you're going to be pulling the air through the radiator you might have to flip the fans completely so keep that in mind i don't know what your situation is or in what direction you need the fans to go once you've set the fans on here you're going to need this bag here that says other mounting accessories there's going to be two bags in here i've already taken this one out this one says washer and long screws that's the one you're going to need open it up these are the ones we need to attach the fans to the radiator so just put these four screws in and then make sure it's lined up properly with the screw holes and usually you can feel when they sort of fall into the holes and then just tighten them down not overly tight or anything see this one had a little bit of resistance so i'm going to pull back a little and i'm going to start over could have been cross threading and you don't really want to do that now the final step before this goes into the case we're going to go ahead and connect this breakout cable set so it's a cluster of cables with one connector which is really nice and it plugs in right in between the pipes right here and basically just line this up and push down there is no satisfying click or anything it just sort of sits flush with this little block right here now once you've done that we can go ahead and install the radiator into our case now i'm going to install this at the top with the tubes in the back of the case you can always put the tubes in the front of the case this is the way i'm going to do it so before i secure this to the top i'm going to feed some of these cables to the back side of the case just so they're not in my way or getting pinched when i screw this in same thing with this breakout cable and i'm just going to do that now because it's easier to do it now. Once you put the radiator in, you lose uh, quite a bit of space. So now this is ready to be secured to the case, which we're gonna do right now. Now in the same bag where you found those long screws and the washers, there's gonna be another bag. This one says thumb screws and short screws. We're gonna need those short screws to attach the radiator to the case. The thumb screws we're gonna use later. So here are the little short screws that we're gonna need. And you're gonna start putting these through the case mounting points into the radiator. Now, sometimes in your case, you may not have enough screw holes to mount all of the screws to the radiator. As you can see, I can't fit this last screw in here, which is perfectly okay, it's perfectly fine. The radiator, as you can see, is stable and it's gonna stay in here perfectly fine. All right, now that we got the radiator installed, it's time to prep the motherboard so we can get the water block installed onto the motherboard. And that's where these two bags come into play. So like I said, I'm gonna need the AMD kit. However, I will talk a little bit about the Intel kit right now. So first things first, Intel does usually require an Intel backplate. Now for the Intel users, this is your backplate. Remove this adhesive strip right here, flip it over, and then line up these 
corners right here with the screw holes on your motherboard. They should be four equally spaced and all you got to do is just place them into those holes like that and stick that down. Once you have the Intel backplate installed, then you're going to need to figure out which Intel socket you have. So there's a lot of different sockets with different heights and all of that. That's where these standoffs come into play. Now for AMD, there's already a backplate and that's where these screw holes right here come from. So obviously you're gonna need the AMD socket AM5 slash AM4 standoff screws, which is in this bag here. And then this same bag right here comes with this AM4 slash AM5 retention bracket. The Intel retention bracket is already pre-installed on the water block and I'll show you how to change this in a second. All right, now that we got the back plate all sorted, we're gonna take those standoff screws, the dedicated ones for your specific motherboard. If you have this cooler and it didn't come with the standoffs for your motherboard, because I know Intel, uh, I think some of the newer ones, the 2000s, those don't need a back plate, first of all. And second of all, this, this kit that I have doesn't have the proper standoffs for that. So you can contact NZXT and I believe they should be able to send you a free set. Don't quote me on that. I'm not 100% sure, but that's usually how they do it. Now for the AMD standoff screws, both sides are not exactly the same. One side has a different thread than the other side. So the way you can figure out which side goes into the back plate is you can either test it like this, or you can just take those thumb screws that we found in the other bag and test that. Once you figure out which side is supposed to go in the motherboard, then you just go ahead and thread these in place. All right, once you got all the correct standoffs in place, now it's time to get this to go on your motherboard. So remove this plastic cover. And as you can see, there is pre-applied thermal paste. Try not to smudge this. If you do, you can always scrape a little bit off the corners and put it right in the center. Once you tighten it down, that center blob will spread evenly and you'll be fine. So if you're installing this on an Intel motherboard, you can keep these brackets in place. If you're installing on an AMD motherboard like me, all you gotta do is slide these out just like that. Same thing with the top. Now get your AMD retention brackets. And another thing you have to keep in mind with AMD is which way you're gonna actually slide these in because there's two separate ways. So I'm actually gonna mount mine like this, which means I need the retention bracket up top to line up with those standoffs. So I'm gonna slide this in at the top. And then I'm just gonna mirror that on the top here. The reason I mentioned that is because on this specific cooler, they give us customizability and you can install them this way. So if you are putting the tubes on the bottom like that, you can flip those brackets. Now we're gonna install this. Before you do that, just take a look at your CPU. Make sure there's no fingerprints. If there is, just grab a little piece of paper towel with some alcohol and just clean it off real quick, let it dry, and then go ahead and install this. So all you gotta do is just line up these holes with the standoffs, set it in place, and that's where you get your thumb screws and while you're holding this in place, just get one corner, thread it in just a few turns like that. Now that you got that first one in with just a few turns, we can get the next one in. So thread that in just a few turns and then move on to the next one and give this one a few turns and then finish up with that last one. And don't tighten these down all the way just yet. That's why I'm saying just a few turns. Now that you've done that, start in the original corner where you put that first one in. Now what you're gonna do is give these like three or four turns at a time. So that's good enough for this one. Go in a X pattern. So we started up here. Now we're gonna move down here. Give it about the same amount of turns and then you're gonna go next to that one, the closest one. I know on Intel, they're all equally spaced. So just go, if you did the bottom, then do the other bottom one or you can do the top. It doesn't matter. Just keep going in an X pattern and do the same amount of turns and then move to that last corner, same amount of turns, and then start over and do the same exact thing again. And the reason we're doing it this way is so that you're getting equal pressure on all four corners and that way your CPU block is gonna be seated on the CPU perfectly. But don't try to over tighten. And by over tighten, I don't mean like, you know, once it stops moving like this, then you're done and you'll be good to go. So that's secured, that's in there. Now we're gonna move to the back side, and I'll show you each individual cable, how to plug those in, where they go, and all that good stuff. 
All right, now that we're here, keep in mind this one breakout cable that has all the cables attached with this sleeve is from the radiator. That one separate cable is from the fans, which we're gonna plug in right now. So the breakout cable has this connector here. It's the only one over here that looks like that. And then the fan cable has this connector here. It's very thin and wide. So we're just gonna go ahead and plug that in right here. So it snaps into place and that's done. Now the next step, let's go ahead and find a SATA cable or SATA power cable from your power supply to plug this one into. So on my PC, I see one right over here. So I'm just gonna pull this one out and we're gonna use this one. So here's that connector, what it looks like. Keep in mind, it, it does come off of the back of your power supply. So sometimes you have to go searching for it. And then the NZXT cable looks like this. As you can see in this little corner, there's like this little L shape and you just line that up with this one here. That's where this whole all-in-one cooler system is gonna get all of its power. All right, while we're still down here, this cable here is the USB 2.0 cable. This is where all the data goes through. So this is where you're gonna control the RGB fans, the fan speeds, the pump speed, the screen, and all of that. So this is very important to plug in. I'll show you the header on the motherboard in a second. Usually they're at the bottom of the motherboard. So I'm gonna push this to the bottom of the motherboard, just like that. And now we have one final cable right here. It's this three pin and basically this is a fan or pump cable. So this cable goes up top on my motherboard. So you can just feed it up there. And now I'll turn this around and show you where those two plugs plug in. All right, the first one we're gonna plug in is this cable right here, the USB cable. And on my motherboard, like I said, it's at the bottom right over here. It actually says USB or right on the bottom of it, it says JUSB. Your motherboard might be a little different. The thing to look for is this pin layout with one corner pin missing, which matches up to this one right here. And I already have one plugged in. I have two of these headers on my motherboard and I'm gonna go ahead and plug the NZXT one in that bottom one right there. So all you have to do is line up that missing pin and just make sure it's all the way seated down. All right, now here is that three pin cable we brought through. That's going to plug in right over here where it says CPU fan. Now the way you're gonna do that is you see this little notch right here. That's gonna line up with the little notch right over there by my finger. And I know this is a four pin, and that's a three pin, but if you line up those two notches, it'll plug in just right. I took out the RAM so I can show you this a little bit better. And there it is, fully plugged in. Now to install the NZXT software, you gotta go to their official website, nzxt.com, click on this connect up here, click on NZXT cam software, and click download cam. Once it's done downloading, go ahead and open it up agree to their terms, confirm, and it's pretty much just as simple as that. All right, once this is installed, you can go to lighting and click on this LCD display. And right here, if you need to rotate it, you can hit rotate. Once you do that, the screen will be in the correct orientation. Now, as you can see, there's a bunch of different settings for you to change like the background and a whole lot of settings that you can change here. You can change what shows up. So you can do liquid temperature, you can do GPU load if you want, and then the secondary readings, there's two. So you can do, let's say liquid and I don't know, GPU clock speed. Plenty of customization. You can also change the color of the actual numbers. So let's do green on the liquid and the text separately. So if you want, let's say you don't want it to say what it is, you can just select the same color as the background and it disappears, or you can just select a different color. So I'm not really doing anything um, to match anything. Right now it's set to 80%. You can turn it down, turn it up, uh, the brightness, and then this lighting ring, right here you don't have to have it synced if you have it synced basically it'll sync based on the little visual right here or you can just select something completely different for it if you want and then for the fans you can do the same you can change uh you can change each individual color of the led if you flip the switch right here or you can just do the all the fans all together and basically just change their color 
The other thing you can do is you can set a profile. The profile will save all of these settings in one single profile. So as you switch, you will end up getting a different profile basically. Same thing with the cooling. You have different profiles. You can do silent, you can do performance or fixed, or you can just add your own profile, name it whatever you want. And then you can customize the pump speed based on what you like, or you can select from one of these. So if you want to do your own, you can select custom and then sort of mess with it however you want. And then you can change the temperature source. So if you want, you can base it off of the CPU temperature, liquid temperature or the GPU temperature. Fans, same thing. You can select the temperature source. You can just go to CPU if you want. And again, same concept. These fans are quite quiet. So yeah, not too bad. Well, there it is fully installed. Now I hope this video was helpful. If it was, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.